up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 Today we're going to be doing the match preview for Barcelona versus Real Madrid in La Liga. It is the biggest match in club football history, El Clasico. A match that needs no introduction, of course, in terms of the magnitude and the importance of the match. But in terms of the La Liga title race as well, it is even more important. This will be the match that every single football fan in the world will be watching this weekend. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's check out the 200 likes this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 4.15 p.m. local time. So we do have the early kickoff tomorrow in La Liga, which is usually the case when we host the home El Clasico first. And of course, this match will be taking place at the Estadi Luis Campos Stadium in Monjuic. And we do have some news about the stadium. Again, it's probably going to be sold out right here right now that only the very expensive tickets with the bad views are still available. But I think this will get picked up very, very soon. But in regards to the stadium, there will be... A Tifu. Finally, I don't remember the last time we had a Tifu in a Classico or just in general, but there is plans to have a Tifu tomorrow. We don't know what the message will be. We don't know what the Tifu will look like, but we will see it tomorrow, of course. Now for some bad news. The referee for this match has been confirmed. You won't bloody believe it. It is the most Madrista referee on the pitch. It is Gil Manthano. Not only is he a Madrista, he absolutely hates Barcelona and on the VR it will be Guillem Fernandez. Let's start off by taking a look at the league table where Barcelona currently sit in third place in La Liga on 24 points after playing 10 matches we do have 7 wins and 3 draws no losses which is good the 3 draws do come up against uh, Hernada, Mallorca and Getafe all away games funnily enough Real Madrid are top of the table ahead of Barcelona by 1 point on 25 points after playing 10 matches they have 8 wins 1 draw one loss, the exact same record as second place, Girona. And Atletico Madrid in fourth place, two points behind us, but they do have a game in hand. I believe that game was canceled home uh, to Sevilla because the weather conditions that day were just unplayable. So if they win that game, they're on 25 points. So technically speaking, in the title race right now, Barcelona are one point, ahead, uh, one point behind Atletico and Real Madrid. Of course, a win this match would be absolutely monumental. Uh, it would put Barcelona at the top of the table, of course, pending the Girona result. Quick, let's take a look at the top teams who will be facing this weekend. Girona will be hosting Celta Vigo. I believe that's happening later on today, actually, so we'll actually know the result of that game. Girona could well and truly end this match day top of the table. And Atletico Madrid will be hosting Deportivo Alaves at home as well, so they'll both definitely, I think, end up winning their matches. So this El Clasico could end up being... Real Madrid third and Barcelona fourth. If it's a draw, it could be Real Madrid uh, cruise victory and still be top of the table. It could be Barcelona. So huge, huge moment for the title race. I think, again, I'm going to state this one more time. Corona will slowly but surely drop off, I believe. I think they're probably competing around fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh-ish when we come to the middle of the season. I don't think they'll be in this top four for a very long time. But again, Barcelona will be, and this is a huge, huge match for the league title race, not only in terms of numbers, but also psychologically in terms of momentum. Let's now take a look at our opponents in Real Madrid. There's an argument for them being the best and most historic team in the world. I would disagree. But nonetheless, of course, a very, very good side. But the last time we faced them in all competition was, of course, in preseason, where we absolutely battered them. 3-0. I forget where this took place. I think it was uh, MetLife Stadium, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, line for this match is on the right-hand side of your screen. Again, we had no Joao Felix yet, no Joao Cancelo. Romeo was starting in the pivot, Gunduan, De Jong, Pedri was on the left, and of course the man that we're not going to speak about, he was on the right, as you can see he is the face of the uh, score line there, so a very similar line to what we can expect tomorrow, again we do have a few missing personnel in Kunde, in De Jong, in Lewandowski, in Pedri, so that's four players from that lineup, or five if you conclude the guy who left out of the uh, squad completely, so it will be a different game. In terms of uh, competitive competition, the last result was when we lost at home in the Copa del Rey. I'm not going to mention that scoreline because it still haunts me to this day. So you could say the last two Clasicos fairly even. One side dominated one game, one side dominated another game. But I think overall Clasicos in the past year, I would say, I would say Barcelona definitely have Atletico 
I would say that Barcelona definitely have the Real Madrid's number. Now, Real Madrid's last six matches in all competition are as follows. In their last match, they won 2-1 against Braga. They drew 1-1 with Sevilla. They beat Osasuna 4-0. They beat Napoli 3-2. They beat Girona 3-0 away from home. And they beat Las Palmas 2-0. So, three clean sheets in their last six matches. So, 50% success rate, you could say. Let's take a look now. The last three matches in all competition. Firstly, is the match before the international break where they beat Osasuna 4 nil. You can see the formation on the right hand side as well. This is their very typical uh, lineup in these 4 1 2 1 2, where they have kind of four midfield and Bellingham dropping in behind the two forwards, whoever the forwards may be on the night. We did have the pivot shoe menu playing at center back because Alaba was injured, uh, Militao is injured, Nacho was suspended, so they had no one else. That's why he played there. Again, you can tell by the scoreline, it was. A dominant performance and in the end they picked up vital points before the uh, international break first match back from the international break those where they drop points where they drew 1-1 with Sevilla that now makes this game more uh, you know entertaining because now Barcelona can leave for all them because they won this game I think Barcelona can only tied with them on points 1-1 it was a very very good game I ended up watching this game uh, Real Madrid had chances in that first half, but after that, they were absolutely dead. I think the moment, the atmosphere, you can even see the storyline with Sergio Ramos facing them, I think maybe he got to them uh, just post-international break. They weren't really at the races. I think the first 10, 15 minutes, they dominated, but after that, all Sevilla. Again, they get a bit of luck to score right after Sevilla score as well. I think Sevilla honestly deserved the win, but I think Real Madrid would be happy walking away with the points. So they just struggled in this game quite a bit, but in the end, they probably walk away with the luckily one point and the final match of all competition was a 2-1 win against Braga in the Champions League. I believe they played on Tuesday. We played on Wednesday. Also forgot to mention by the way, look at this. So Braga away, Sevilla away, and now uh, Barcelona away. So remember this last three matches of all competition have all been away games. They've been traveling left right instead of like, going to Madrid to um Portugal, Madrid to Sevilla, and then Madrid to Barcelona. So they're doing a lot of traveling recently. So that's probably why they got the uh Tuesday kickoff, but you can see their lineup again on the screen. Similar personnel to what we expect tomorrow in the match. But again, the match was, I would say, a dominant performance in Real Madrid. They did go 1 0 up. They scored, I think, two or three offside goals. Braga pulled one back to make it uh, 2 1, but then Real Madrid saw the match out. I think, think Braga, since after they scored, weren't really that threatening, and they pick up another three points in the Champions League. Now, on the screen right now is the line that I believe that Carlo Ancelotti will select for this match. Again, the symbol formation of the 4 1 2 1 2. You could say 4 3 3 with Bellingham as a false 9. It's going to be Kepa in goal, a back four of Carvajal, Alaba, Rudiger. I think he will go with Kamavinga at left back because I think he doesn't really trust Mendy and Fran Garcia in the big moments. And there also are reports saying that uh, Ancelotti want to wants to play five midfielders in his starting lineup, so there's actually one there at left back and then four in the midfield. Then you go to many in the pivot, Valverde and Cruz on the right and left of the interior. Then of course Bellingham just in front of them. And up top will be Rodrigo and Vinicius Jr. So very small forwards, but very fast. Um, I think they'd probably be more effective in this match if they do start Jose Lu. Hopefully that's not the case. But again, on paper from last season, there's not really much change to this lineup. Kepa comes in and Bellingham comes in. That's pretty much it. They do lose Benzema, of course, from last season. This really isn't a lineup that scares me, but we know this lineup is very, very effective, especially if everything goes their way in terms of the referee as well. But it'll be the lineup I think that Carlo Ancelotti was left for the classical tomorrow. I'll be shocked if it's anything other than these 11. So overall, final thoughts on Real Madrid. Of course, they're a very, very good side. I'd be stupid not to say that. And they're very well managed by one of the best managers in the history of the game, Carlo Ancelotti. You could definitely have the argument of him being top five managers of all time. I think he's definitely in the top 10. He's a very effective manager. He, he basically goes out there to get the result. I don't think he goes out there to play, you know, champagne, good football. But when you have Galacticos in your starting 11, it kind of, you know, builds that chemistry up. I think he's a very good manager. I don't think... He's a, I don't think he's a tactical manager when he comes to Real Madrid. I think in his time at Chelsea, it's time at AC Milan, PSG, he saw some tactical changes, but at Barcelona, not too much. Of course, the one time where he made a tactical change against Barcelona, he went with a 4-4-2, we battered them 4-0. So, wouldn't expect him to make any tactical crazy changes. I think he'll go simple and hope that the individual quality will get the result. Now, please look out for Real Madrid. Of course, it's quite a few. Uh, you have Vinicius up front, Bellingham on the form of his life. I think uh, Chouamani in the pivot is very strong. Of course, Tony Kroos can pin a ball, Valverde uh, long shots. If, if Valverde lines up a long shot and no one blocks, him it's going on target at the bare minimum i wouldn't be shocked if he scores and their weak points are definitely in the back line of course kamavinga is not a left back so if we have a strong right wing to go at him i think their weakest point though is keppa keppa did make a mistake in the match against sevilla i think he is the only one 
in this lineup that can definitely play in the favor of Barcelona. Of course, Cavajal sometimes has a, has a stinker, but Kepa for me is the weak point. Then you get under pressure, get him stuck in there. He could make a mistake, but again, it's a very, very good side. And I think the only way they win this game is if they sit back, soak up the pressure, and hit Barcelona on the break. I don't think they'll come at Barcelona. I think they'll let Barcelona come at it, hold the possession, and then hit us on the break. And if that's the case, the, the full backs and the center backs have to be on point to stop those counterattacks. Now, the squad list for the match against Real Madrid will be released at some point tomorrow. I think it'll probably be released three or four hours before the game. But we do have some big news. I have some footage here of the pre-training session this morning. But we've had some shocking news. Lewandowski, Frankie de Jong, Rafinha, Jules Kunde have all completed the full training session. Every first team player train apart from Sergi Roberto. I could not believe this. Yesterday, De Jong didn't train, Lewandowski didn't train, Kunde didn't train, Pedro didn't train. It was only Rafinha. All of a sudden today, they're all fully fit and ready to go. I am flabbergasted. We are hearing that Lewandowski could definitely start. De Jong could be on the bench. Rafinha could start, but most likely he'll be on the bench. We're hearing that Kunde and De Jong probably won't be in the squad list, but they are completing full training sessions, which of course is great news. Keep in mind, after this game, we do have no midweek game next week. Then we have the Anoeta over the weekend. That'll be a very, very important game to get some players back. This is obviously fantastic news because everyone's coming back early. Of course, we didn't expect Kunde till mid-November, De Jong till mid-November, Pedri, we thought we'd come back now. Lewandowski, we thought first week of November, Rafinha should have been back now. So we are getting some early news, but I'm also quite concerned how... I'm sh what baffled me was Kunde. Kunde was not supposed to be even training until mid-next week, and he's back already. That, for me, is unbelievable, but hey, this is the... Uh, the uh, situation that we're currently in and we could see some surprises in that squad this tomorrow keep your eyes on it time now to get into chavi's press conference reaction to his press conference this morning of course he was asked a lot of questions from the media injuries classico post el classico player fitness the lot of it it was an absolutely crazy press conference but let's get and see what chavi had to say this morning in the presser I mean, my God, was this an absolute doozy. So he comes off, starts off by saying that for us, it represents a lot. It is a game that everyone wants to play. We did well. It would mean a boost in morale and confidence. We would overtake a direct rival. It is a transcendent match, a very important match with the commitment tremendously. Everyone wants to play and wants to try themselves. He was then asked about the injuries. Of course, we saw the footage that, you know, Kunde's training, De Jong, Rafinha, Pedri, and Xavi said, I was also surprised. Players that we ruled out wanted to be there. They have better feelings. We will see tomorrow how they are. We have to wait and see the list tomorrow to see this afternoon how they felt after training. May everyone be wanting to be available is fantastic. So even Xavi was shocked, but you know, it's crazy. Then he's asked on Lewandowski saying that he is fine. I will not advance a lineup or clues. He is fine and I will decide tomorrow. The rumor is that if Lewandowski tells Xavi he's 100% fit, he will start. Then he's asked on Pedri saying that everyone has good feelings and wants to be there, but the staff and the medical team do not want to force anyone. They want to be there out of commitment, but we will see tomorrow we will decide. He's then asked who will play out right back for the Classico saying that we have Cancelo to solve Vinicius. He is in the natural position. Tomorrow we will see. We have several alternatives and then we will decide. Of course, hinting at possibly Arujo playing there. Then as on the players saying that those who are better will play, those who are not at 100%, what we can we, what we can do is put someone who is not. Today they felt good and we will see tomorrow. Then as on Ken Mentano being selected as the referee for this match, and it seems to me that the computer has detected a referee and the less we talk about it, the better. This is a draw, right? I always say that I believe in the honesty of the referee. So Xavi getting trying to get on the good side of the referee early on. Then as on Madrid saying that Pater has changed compared to the last year, Vinicius and Rodrigo separate themselves very easily and that is what we have to watch out for. Then as on the class saying that the obligation is the same for both clubs it is a 50 50 game there's there's almost never favors at any given point you can't predict anything in my experience the classico is very very unpredictable then asked on the fans saying that a full house is accepted in Montjuic and the fans have to be at 10 for a long time it is a game where the fans will not fail us then asked on the consecutive victories at the Montjuic again we are undefeated at home I don't even think we've dropped points at home in all competitions so far it's another motivation to keep this record we are feeling very good in the Montjuic stadium then he was asked on the dead ball situation at Barcelona saying that there, are, there is an order of fouls corners penalties ladder fouls and this is an order that has to, has to be obeyed in the end the players are human they speak another order can be left 
stuff, but there is an order that Sergi Allegri prepares very well. Of course, he's assistant manager. Then as on Cancelo, saying that he's losing, uh, his losses are not due to lack of confidence. He feels important and useful and he dares, but he has to minimize his losses below. You have to dare, but to be higher up. Again, Cancelo is losing the ball a lot in recent matches. Then as on Oyo Romeo, say the Oyo, like all my feelers, we have to be very attentive. We have a very clear way of attacking and a way of defending. Madrid releases these two or three players that we have to be very attentive to. Transitions are what benefit the most Madrid, and we will have to be very attentive to that. And he's on Joao Felix, and I don't know, uh, I didn't know that he never scored against Real Madrid. It's a good moment tomorrow for him and for everyone. Joao does very well to the position that we want. He's an ideal position. I don't see him as a pure nine or as well as a mature medium. It is, an, uh, it is his ideal position and one in which he is the most comfortable in. Then he was asked on his experience in the Classico, saying that, well, this season I'm calmer. People are excited. I see teachers on the street. People are excited and looking forward to this game. Then asked on the young players in the squad if they could end up starting the game or not, saying that we have to talk about it many times that people from home are a plus because of their involvement and commitment because they feel the colors having people from La Masia is fantastic because they know about the rivalry as that is fundamental again when you're from the home it just it just hits different the classico is then asked on Pedri again say that we'll never know about the games accumulating in his first year it is the first thing you have to uh, think about but we did not know if this is the main reason keep in mind Pedri by the way has now missed four El Clasicos in a row if he does not feature tomorrow i don't think he will play we never know injuries are uh, manufactured with pedro we are on a schedule no there's no problem with pedro or anyone if we have to highlight something that is a player uh, who are there for five weeks already in three above all all the positions for players the five players who are out are in then he's asked on his first El Clasico, saying that there are more nerves, more tension, you have to control your emotions, your character, the tempo of the match, being intelligent. It is difficult because your heart is hot, but your head is cold, and this is key. There's always more emotion than normal, so that control is basic. Then he was asked on the El Clasico rivalry, saying it's one of the biggest rivalries for sure. In Argentina, they have uh, Boca River Plate. In Sevilla, there's Sevilla Betis, the Bass Derby, the biggest game at club level. Yes, it will for surely be the Clasico. It is. Everyone will be the will be watching. Ideal scenario is to do big things. These are games that we always read of children with courage for that. He was then asked on Gabby saying that it's not necessary to say anything because he has matured a lot against us. If I remember correctly, his first year he was expelled once and this year once. He's on the bundle for the team and he's very passionate. And finally, Chavik concluded off when he was asked about Felix and Bellingham saying that both are equally important. Both are and can be decisive for their team. Let's hope that tomorrow it will be more Joao than Jude. And that concluded Chavi's press comments reaction to have the match against Real Madrid tomorrow. Let's now get into the lineup prediction. We're going to start for the manager, of course, Xavi Hernandez. I'm going to try my best to predict this lineup. I think it will be damn near impossible to predict because we have no idea which players are fit and which players are not fit. But based on the current situation, I have gone with this lineup. On the screen right now, I've gone with Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Cancelo, Arujo, Christensen, and Alejandro Balde, midfield three of Romeo, Gundogan, and Gavi, and a front three of Fermin Lopez, Ferran Torres, and Joao Felix. In terms of the injured players, I think the only one that really has a chance to start is Lewandowski, and if he does start, then fair enough, probably Fermin Lopez will drop out, you put Ferran on the right, Lewandowski up top. Okay, so, at right back, I think he will go Joao. I think it's hard to drop him when he has that ability to go forward and his technicality on the ball is better than Arujo. I think Arujo, with especially Madrid playing a bit more narrow than they're used to, he will probably have both Arujo and Cancelo marking Vinicius. Uh, of course, Christian and Ball, Day to take an all-start. Midfield, he could maybe drop Gundu, uh, drop Gundu one in the pivot to drop Romeo completely, but for Lopez in the midfield, but I think he will go with experience. I think he wants that powerhouse from Romeo to win those duels in the midfield. And of course, Gundu one and Gabby start. For the front three, I cannot see Xavi starting Lemanya Mall. Lemanya Mall has been okay recently, but I think also you want to have something off the bench. I think Lemanya Mall off the bench in this match will be more impactful than he will be starting. And for Min Lopez has played an absolute blinder against Shakhtar. I think he does deserve a start from Xavi. I think Xavi will give him that nod. And of course, Fran and Joao Felix are the only other fit forwards. Again, want to reiterate one more time. I think the only injured player that will start this game is Lewandowski. I don't think Rafinha, De Jong, Pendry, Koundé, whoever will not start. And that's the line I think that Xavi Hernandez will select for this match. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think Xavi will go with. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was a Barcelona coach, and I have made a few changes from Xavi's lineup. I have gone with this lineup 
on the screen right now, I've got Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Arujo, Christensen, Inigo Martinez, Alejandro Balde, midfield three of Gundogan, Gavi, and Fermin Lopez, and a front three of Cancelo, Ferran Torres, and Juho Felix. Let me explain myself. My idea is that I don't want Romeo starting. Uh, Romeo has been shocking the past month. I, I cannot remember a good game. And I don't want to risk it in this match. I understand why people want to start Romeo. You know, he wins those dudes in midfield. A bit of a destroyer. I get it. But he's been poor, man. So what I have done is that I've dropped Romeo. Put Gagunda 1 in the pivot. Have Gavi, of course. I also want to Fermin Lopez in the midfield and not on the wing. But I also want to start Indigo Martinez. I think he's done very, very well in the past two games. And also, I think that left foot center back just brings us so much more dynamic. And I want him to play. So if he get to play, that means Aruho has to be at right back. And I've moved Cancelo more advanced. You could say, bring Cancelo down this way a bit. It's more of a three back with Balde and Cancelo as the width. Uh, Joao face a bit on the left, Ram a bit on the right. You can have Fermin Bear as a false nine. And then Gundogan and Gavi sitting in front. That's how I would see it in game. But I think dropping Cancelo for this game is too uh, too risky. And also, I don't want to start Lemany Mal because, again, I think he's a bit too young. And I just need something off the bench as well. I'd rather have Lemany Mal off the bench than Joao Cancelo. That's my mindset. I picked this lineup on the screen right now. But, of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think the score line will be. Time now for my score prediction. What do I believe the result will be in this match? I've got my R's right up the middle of the fence, and I have gone with a 1-1 draw in this match. Unfortunately, uh, game to the cap now, or Monju week now, it's either a Barcelona battering or it's a draw. I mean, last season, of course, we nearly won 2-1. I get it, but either there's a battering or a draw. That is the most likely scenario. I think both teams are coming to this match on decent form. I think Barcelona, I think if we had a fully fit team, I back us 100%. But with these injuries, you know, even Lulu Dosi does start just coming fresh off an injury. I'm being conservative. I think it will be 1 1. I don't think Barcelona will lose. I think it'll either be a draw or a Barcelona win. I think it'll be very difficult for Real Madrid to win this game when we're at home and we're, we need, and we're have the more of the pressure, you could say, to win this game. But I don't know, man. I think in terms of lineup selections and all these things, it's. I think the moment as well. And also, I'm, uh, uh, I'm uh, keeping my prediction safe. So, I have gone with a 1 1 draw. I think if uh, Barcelona do win, I would back a, you know, 3 1, 2 1. I think we will concede. I don't th I think if we keep a clean sheet, I think we'll win. 100. Uh, that's a bit uh, cliche, but I think we will end up scoring in this game. I think it's where the back line of Vinicius is on form or the rig, whatever the case may be. But overall, I have gone with a 1 1 draw, but of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think the score line will be. So that was my match preview for Barcelona versus the Real Madrid in La Liga. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to first, of course, is your score prediction. And secondly, on those lineups. Firstly, would you rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup? What do you think Chai would go with? Would you go through the manager? Leave me all your thoughts down below. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. For the live watch along, set the reminder on the screen and come and join me watch this game with me. Follow here for the match, bye bye match review. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Huge game ahead. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And I mean absolutely nothing but the three points. Take care and force a Barca. Barca, 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 Barca.